Okay, there are those who compare the origin of life to a whirlwind. A whirlwind blowing through a junkyard and in its wake creating a jumbo jet. Just think about that. Take, put that image in your head. A whirlwind blowing through a junkyard. How long do whirlwinds usually take? Let's be generous. Two minutes? Two minutes. Five thousand million years ago. planet Earth was formed. Try and get your head around that figure. Imagine if you were marooned on a desert island with a person of the opposite sex, a very attractive person of the opposite sex, and you're not aging. And you are told that you can engage in sexual relationships with this person one million times. But you have to live on the island for 5 billion years, 5,000 million years. That means that you can look forward to having sex once every thousand years. Does that give you an idea of how long that is? And what is life, anyway? What is life? It is not just birdies and bees and trees. No. The most primitive form of life you can imagine isn't even cellular. It is just... Let me explain. You have a soup of chemicals on this earth shortly after it was formed. And these chemicals, as chemicals tend to do, react with each other. So you've got a soup of chemicals floating around and occasionally, like under the influence of lightning strikes and all sorts of stuff, might even create newer chemicals, but you've got chemicals floating around minding your own business and one thing you need to realize about chemicals is that as long as they do mind your own business and they don't react with anything, they will remain in place essentially forever. So chemicals could be floating around in the soup for a hundred million years, unchanged, if necessary. But Occasionally chemicals come across chemicals that they can react with and that reaction might produce more chemicals in its wake and those chemicals might react to something else again and then you might have chemicals that react with something else again and then this might react with the original chemical there which might in turn also react with this causing a reaction with that which causes more to be produced with this which then interacts with that causing more to be produced of that until you get to a point in this interesting chemical soup here where we reach what's called a phase change where everything is in effectively engaged in reactions via links and particular reactions and, and particular nodes and connections and so on with pretty much everything else. In which case, every reaction becomes an input to this system. Everything it produces is output, but it's also again input to the system. And when that happens, you get what are called feedback loops. 
and that is a phase change. You know, once everything is engaged in feedback loops like this, you have reached a new phase of of the state of that ocean there, or the, the whatever was going on on the planet, and that can be called life already. It is the most primitive form of life imaginable. And that might have happened within a fairly short amount of time, 4.9 million years ago, billion years ago, for example. From that to single-celled organism of the most primitive kind, and do not, do not mistake a eukaryotic single-celled organism for something primitive. Because eukaryotic cells, containing things like mitochondria and so on, are very, very advanced. Now these are the most simplest things, with a little bit of DNA in them, floating around in a little bit of soupy stuff, enveloped by the most primitive of membranes. When did all that get achieved? Well, we're not sure. But it can have been a hell of a lot more than four and a half billion years ago. Four and a half billion years ago. And when do you think did the first multi-celled organisms containing eukaryotic cells appear on this planet? Five hundred million years ago, or thereabouts, six hundred maybe. It's an order order of magnitude removed from the actual age of this planet. Single-celled organisms have had at least three and a half billion years to evolve. Not two minutes, like that jumbo jet. An amount of time that is mind-boggling. 